Hello everyone and welcome to today's IELTS speaking class. My name is Alexander and we will be doing some IELTS practice today and I'll also be going through some tips relating to the IELTS speaking exam. But before all that, we are being joined today by Tanya. So let me bring Tanya into the class. Hi Alex, great to see you, great to see everyone. Hi. Great to see you too. Happy How Friday. <laughs> <laughs> A very happy Friday. How are you doing? Good. We are exhausted this Friday. No. We have never been busier at Kinetics USA, so, um, but all good. <laughs> all good. 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 Glad what to about you? Yeah, yeah, doing well. Um, yeah, it is a busy time of the year, isn't it, I think? Um, moving in the UK, moving from summer into autumn, people now registering for classes, thinking about making moves, thinking about their futures. So, yeah, it's exciting. It's, uh, it's busy, but it's an exciting time of, uh, of the year. Absolutely. Well, thinking about your future is certainly, I think, on a lot of people's minds. Um, and right now, if you are a nurse and you are thinking or dreaming or hoping of coming to America, your American dream, there is no time like the present. Kinetics USA have been doing international recruitment for many, 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 many years, um, way before the retrogression even. Um, and right now we are seeing an explosion of demand in the US. There are more hospitals, nursing homes, surgery centers, rehab facilities, hiring international nurses. So there is in a, a window of opportunity. There are 290,000, a minimum of 290,000 green cards available this year. Usually in any other year, there's 140,000. Um, and the reason is because a lot of visas were not used up last year because of the pandemic. This is unprecedented. So there really is no better time, I think, in history, one could actually say, um, than to start getting your NCLEX or your IELTS done. Wow. Well, if that's not motivation, I don't know what would be. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this is it, isn't it? I mean, obviously, with the pandemic, it's caused people to put plans back a little bit. But now, as you're saying, this is the time to really take advantage of those changes and, and the situation as it's evolved. Yeah. They, yeah. It, you know, we've been doing this for many years, as I say, and we've never seen anything like this. So right. there really is enormous opportunity. A lot of people have kind of had it at the, back of, at the back of their minds and they think, well, maybe I would like to do that one day. Maybe I will get to it one day. It just seems so hard. It seems so complicated. It seems so overwhelming. I'm so busy with work and kids and family and all of these things. And, you know, tomorrow is like another day. Yeah, yeah. But this is the day, right? This is the day where it's going to be the better opportunity. Yeah, That's a fact. Yeah. That's a fact. This is the day. So if you are serious, if you want to make a change, if you want to get out of that feeling of being stuck right now, now is the time to do it. And really, Alex, I mean, you know, we've had so much enormous success yeah. with the IELTS course. I mean, the we have nurses that have, you know, have, uh, I mean, we had one nurse, Bert, I, I, I think many people might have seen his interview, his IELTS hero interview. He failed the IELTS seven times. He then came to Kinetics USA. He did the, the, the swoosh course uh, and he passed on the eighth time with an eight in speaking. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. You know Bert well. <laughs> yes, I do. I do know him well. And, no, and I was so glad when, I mean, in, in the nicest way possible, I was so glad when I didn't see him anymore because it's like he got there. <laughs> he achieved exactly. it. <laughs> exactly. And everybody yeah. who's watching, Bert turned up to every one of Alex's classes, right? Yes. Yeah. Alex, was he there? Was he? Tell us about it. He was there. He would practice every week. When when we first um, when we were doing these classes before last year, um, I think it took a bit of time for some of the students to get used to the culture of it. I know that it can be a bit nerve wracking to speak live in front of your peers. But Bert was one of those guys who was like, "I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this." And he did it every week. And you could see his dedication. You could see him improving. You could see him really making notes when he would get feedback. Um, and he was so appreciative of that feedback. I was like, yeah, I need to know this. I need to know this. And everything that he was doing where he could make improvements, he really focused on that. And yeah, and, and so when, when I got that message and he'd actually passed the exam, I was so pleased for him. That because, was a great day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And his attitude was, was exactly That's what we on. want. We want that yeah. for everybody. <laughs> yes, of course, of course. Yeah. That's, that's what it's all about, isn't it? 
Yeah, but he did the work. So no. I'm going to leave you now and Alex is going to help you to do the work. I just wanted to pop in and say hi um, and just welcome everybody. This is what, what we want for you is what, what Bert has now experienced. He's passed the aisles. He doesn't have to worry about that anymore. It's not hanging over his head. He is now free to live his life and, and, and live, the, live his potential and, and fulfill his potential. So that is what we really want from every one of you. There's no magic wand. Unfortunately, you have to do the work. So I'm going to leave Alex to get on with it. And we hope to see everybody that is watching to join us in America soon. Absolutely. And, and just one, one note you. before I go, Alex, um, I just wanted to remind everybody that Kinetics USA has a promotion right now. Um, it, it started in, uh, in the month of May, which was Nurses Month, and, every, and nurses were so excited about yeah. it that we extended it until the 31st of October at 5 p.m. California time. Our head offices are in California. Um, and if you refer a nurse to Kinetics who has passed the NCLEX exam, uh, you can go to our website and see all the details. But if you refer a nurse to us that has passed the end place, doesn't have a petitioner as yet, um, and put your name and the nurse's name into our website, you will be eligible for the $1,000 referral fee. We have thousands of nurses that are referring nurses right now. It is our way of paying it forward for nurses at this time of the pandemic. We wanted to just do something for nurses and we encourage you to do that for your peers as well. So please pay it forward for others, help them to live the American dream and get a thousand dollars at the same time. <laughs> and you can go to the Kinetics USA website and see the details of that promotion. Brilliant. Thank you everybody. Um, do you want to just give me the details and I'll share that in the yes. chat box. Um, yes, so. thank you, Alex. So um, people can go to the Kinetics USA um, website um, and look on the website. I'm, I'm so sorry, I don't know the exact link. I think it's Kinetics no USA slash referrals, but it's on the Kinetics USA website. Um, yep. And you just go, it takes you two minutes. You can just go in, you put in your name. So we've got that in the system. And you put in the nurse's name who has passed the end clicks. Let me be clear. These are you referring nurses who have passed the NCLEX that are not, do not yet have a sponsor. Um, and you can see the terms and conditions of all of that on the website. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Great to see you. Okay. So you heard that there. I'll share some details on that in the chat box uh, within the next few minutes. So welcome to all those who are watching us live today for our IELTS speaking practice. I can see we've got a number of students that have joined us live in the class, which is wonderful to see. And I will endeavor to get as many of you involved in the speaking practice as possible. So if you are watching this class live, then please let me know in the chat box, let me know your name, where you are currently watching from, and um, it would be great to see um, the, um, the range of countries and the range of people who are watching us live today for the IELTS speaking practice class. Okay, um, so as I say, I can see a number of students have joined us within the class. We've got Lauren, Jesse, Dan is with us, uh, Jess, Alice, Cynthia, Mac, Miriala, and Marcia. So that's wonderful, a, a really um, high number of students joining us live in the class. Hello to all of you and, um, and a very warm welcome. As I say, I hope to get as many of you involved as possible. Also, hello to uh, Jamie, who is watching from Singapore. Um, wonderful to see you in today's class, Jamie. And who else is watching us live? Who else is watching us on YouTube or Facebook? Do let me know. So, um, whilst um, we are all coming together, Peps has joined us. Peps from the UK has joined us. Hello to you, Peps, watching on Facebook. Uh, let us have a look at some of the materials and the tips that we're going to go through today. So, as you can see, we're doing we're the speaking test. And what I want us to have a look at is 
going to come up. Just before we do have a look at that, you heard Tanya who talked about the promotion, the referral promotion, where you could get $1,000 if you refer a nurse who has already passed the NCLEX program. Also, we have a promotion here um, relating to Swoosh and Kinetics, the IELTS scholarship program, which you can sign up for. We will provide you support and guidance in terms of achieving your American dream and living and working abroad as a nurse. So if you would like to find out more information about this program and get more support in terms of achieving your goals of living and working abroad, then to click on the website address, which you can see um, scrolling along the bottom of the screen right now. I'll also share that in the chat box. Okay, so we are going to have a look at some tips now. And yeah, hopefully you will get involved. Uh, I can see we've been joined by uh, AMH um, Heres from Egypt. Hello to you. So we're going to look today at superlatives. And this is because in speaking, superlatives can be very useful. It is one of the main elements of grammar that you'll be assessed on. And so it's important we can use superlatives correctly in a variety of circumstances. So first of all, just a very basic description. We use superlatives to indicate the upper limit of equality. So for example, the biggest house on the street. We can also use superlatives to indicate the lower limit of equality. So the smallest dog in the world, for example. In the above sentences, there is limiting information. So we use the biggest house, but it's not the biggest house on the planet, it's the biggest house on the street. That's the limiting information that we use. So we can use a superlative in that context. We can say it is the biggest house, but on the street. Um, in the second one, the limiting information is actually much broader. This is the smallest dog in the world. So not necessarily, maybe there's a smaller dog somewhere in space, but on this planet, this is the smallest dog. So there's a very basic description for you of the superlative. Um, but here are some ways we can use the superlative in speaking. So have a look at the following examples. You can see there are four of them. Um, what is the limiting information in each case? And what do you notice about the first sentence that is different to the other sentences? So let me know if you have the answers to these questions. Okay, so first question. What is the limiting information? Second question, how is the first example different to the other three? So if you think you know the answer to this question, do let me know. Any ideas? Okay, so let's have a look at this together. So the limiting information we have in each of the sentences, um, I'm going to highlight now. And also, um, we're going to look at how the first sentence is different to the other three. So here we are, the limiting information. So the first one, one of my, yeah, so one of my is the limiting information. Yeah, not your, not his, not somebody else's, it's my, one of my best friends. The second one, the limiting information is, he's the smartest person I know. So again, there may be a smarter person that I don't know, but the limiting information is that he's the, smarting per he's the smartest person that I know. Um, in, the first, in the third sentence, it's the most challenging thing I've ever done. So it may not be the most challenging thing that anybody else has ever done, but for me personally, that's the limiting information. It's the most challenging thing I've ever done. And for number four, it was the most wonderful experience you could ever imagine. So you could ever imagine is the limiting information kind of, but really this is um, a bit of hyperbole. It's a little bit of, a, of a, an exaggeration because you're saying basically, it's not possible to imagine a more wonderful experience. The first sentence is different to the other three because there is a plural noun form in that sentence after the superlative. So you can see here is one of my best friends, friends is plural, whereas the other noun forms are all singular. Yes, smartest person, so person is singular, most challenging thing, thing is singular, most wonderful experience, experience is singular, but friends is plural. 
So can anyone tell me why this is the case? Why do we use the plural form for friends, but we use the singular form for the other nouns? Anyone have any ideas on this? Again, let me know in the chat box if you think you know the answers. Okay, so we've got a suggestion here. Um, Jesse, countable and uncountable. Well, is experience countable? Is person countable? And all of these nouns are countable, aren't they? You can say person, people, thing, things, experience, experiences. So they're all countable. But nice guess. Nice guess there. Okay. Any other ideas as to why the first one is countable? Okay, so Jess says because of the word one. Yeah, this is getting us closer to the point, isn't it? So one of. So if you say one of something, what you're saying is, is that there is more than one. Yeah, he's one of my best friends. So one of referring to a wider group. This is something that comes up quite a lot in the speaking practice. The expression one of is a common expression, but often candidates will use the singular form of the noun when they should be using the plural form. So using the expression one of means that we should use the plural form of the noun. If you were just to say he's my best friend, then that's simple, isn't it? Superlative, singular form of the noun, but you're saying one of, one of a group. Okay, so let's have a look at some uh, other examples. Um, here are some sentences which we could complete. Ooh, sorry, going too far. Here are some sentences which we could complete with our own ideas. So we've got number one, something is one of my favorite somethings. Two is the smartest person I know. Three is the most challenging thing I've ever done. Four was the most wonderful experience you could ever imagine. Five are some of my most important something. So th these are just some frames that we could use. Um, which can be very useful for IELTS speaking. Often for part two, particularly, you have to describe a person or describe an activity or describe an experience. So using the superlative to do that can be very useful. But because we want to make sure we get as many people involved in speaking practice as possible, um, I was going to ask you to suggest some ideas for this, but I'm going to give you some ideas. And then in the speaking practice, let's see if you have the opportunity to use some of this language. So here are some possible sentences then. So in my case, American Beauty is one of my favorite films. So there are other films that are my favorites, but American Beauty is one of them. My friend Ravi is the smartest person I know. So there we are. Um, superlative, smartest person I know. So that limiter again, person I know. There may be other smart people that other people know. Um, but for me, she's the smartest person that I know. Learning a foreign language is the most challenging thing I've ever done. Yeah, so that's uh, something that is true for me. Visiting Machu Picchu was the most wonderful experience you could ever imagine. Um, and number five, my trips in Ecuador are some of my most important memories. So notice this one here. You've got one of plus plural noun. Also, we can use some of plus plural noun as well. So I've got a plural reference in the subject at the beginning of the sentence, my trips in Ecuador. So because this is a plural reference, that means that I should use some not one. Okay, here is a singular, American Beauty is one film, so I should use one when I'm referring to it as a example, an, an example of um, my, my favorite films. So these are, this is some useful language that you can use when it comes to the superlative, and as I say, um, I hope that in today's speaking practice that our um, uh, speakers will make some use of this language. We shall see. So let's move on to the speaking practice. We're going to go on to IELTS speaking part two. Um, for those who are new to the IELTS exam, this lasts in general between three to four minutes. You will have a minute to prepare and then you should speak on a topic for up to two minutes. Always aim to speak for the two minutes because the examiner may wish for you to continue for that period of time. And you should be prepared to stop if the examiner interrupts you. That's a positive sign. It means the examiner's had enough 
they, they've had enough in terms of um, having a wide enough sample of your language and they're ready to move on to the next phase of the test. So to start us off today, um, I'm going to bring uh, Dan into the class. Hi there, Dan. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm great. How about you? <laughs> I'm doing well, thank you. I'm doing well. Um, are you ready for some part two speaking, Dan? Yes. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, so uh, I've got the topic card on the screen. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Fantastic. So, Dan, you've got a minute to prepare, and then you should speak on this topic for up to two minutes. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Dan, are you ready to begin? Yes, sir. Okay, so please describe a famous athlete you know. Okay. I would like to talk about one of the well-known uh, boxer here in our country, and his name is Manny Pacquiao. Uh, I chose this topic because he's an inspiration to us Filipinos. <clears throat> Sorry, he's an inspiration to us Filipinos. Well, Manny Pacquiao is a senator here in... In our, in, in our country, and he's planning he's planning to run for president, he, uh, as what as what I know. Well, knowing Manny Pacquiao, he came from a poor family, wherein uh, he used he, he used his boxing skills for him to uh, to become rich. As a matter of fact, he is one of the millionaires or billionaires here in the Philippines, and. He is a world champion. At first, he fought uh, many famous, uh, famous boxers from different countries like in the Mexica, Mexico and Puerto Rico, I guess. Then whenever he won, he, he's, he was, uh, uh, he was uh, I mean, he was, um, he was being, uh, he was become more popular as time goes. Well, Manny Pacquiao is very inspirational as of uh, as of today because he is uh, he is uh, he would, he he is known to help people, and as what I said before, he is a senator here in the Philippines. Is and he is one of the uh, has he has one of, of who has a purest heart in the um, in the in, in all politician. Mm. Mm. Well, Manny Pacquiao started from the bottom, and well, as he fought, uh, as he fought with his uh, with his skills in boxing, he try he he's improving from time to time, and we can see that Manny okay. Pacquiao. Thank is, you. Uh, Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, don't apologize. Don't apologize. You've made improvements because the first time you did this, you <laughs> yeah. found it very difficult, and this time you find it less difficult. So. You know, there, there was still obviously some hesitation, but those hesitations have been uh, much reduced compared to the first time. So, yeah, you've made you've made big strides in a yeah, short I'll period. Yeah, to improve more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is the thing. It's moving in the right direction. That's the most important yeah. thing. Thank you. I think. Thank you no, no problem at all. It's just about getting more familiar with it. So, um, yeah, there was definitely some nice language in there. He's planning to run for president. Um, was a nice expression. Um, you're using some good linkers, as a matter of fact, was quite nice as well. Whenever he won, um, so linking ideas together, using time references, and um, yeah, sort of generally, you know, obviously the hesitation was there, but but generally I could definitely see improvements and just a wider range of language because you, you produced more. Um, just be careful with plural. 
So again, that one of, one of the well-known boxer, um, and then you talked about many famous boxer. So obviously you wanted to use the plural form in each case. Um, yeah, but yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One, famous boxers. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, but definitely, definitely you're making improvements, Dan. Um, Thank you, sir, Alex. So, yeah. so well done. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so um, good start. Uh, I've got a question here. May I talk about a friend and athlete? I know as I don't know a well-known one. Uh, well, it does say a famous athlete. So just pretend that your friend is famous because the examiner won't know. They won't know the difference. Just say, yeah, it's a famous athlete in the Philippines, for example, or a famous athlete in Nigeria. So, yeah, you want to talk about your friend, just pretend that your friend is famous. Um, and then you're answering the question. Okay, um, so let me bring another participant into the class. I'm going to bring Eloisa in. I think Eloisa might be new to the class. Hello, Eloisa. Are you there? Eloisa? No? Okay, in that case, let me bring um, Mire Miriala into the class. Hi, Miriala, are you there? Hello. Hello, how are you? Fine, sir. Good, good. Is this your first time participating in this class? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, well, a very warm welcome to you. Where are you, where are you based at the moment? India. India, okay. Uh, which part of India? Andhra Pradesh. Okay. Well, welcome to the class, Miriala. Um, we're doing part two speaking practice. Are you familiar with part two? Yeah. Good. It's good. It's good that you're familiar. So let me bring up a new topic for you. And the topic we're going to be looking at is a business person. Um, so can you see that clearly on your screen? Yes. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so you've got a minute to prepare then, Mariala, and then you should speak on this topic for up to two minutes. You may make notes during the preparation time if you wish. Yes. Okay, Mariala, are you ready to begin? Yeah, yes, sir. Well, I am very Fantastic. happy to share. I am very happy to share a real story of my auntie. She is uh, Rani. Uh, once she has lost her uh, husband, and she has two small kids. That time, she she was not known to any business or anything. But she have no other way to bring up the children. That the reason uh, she thought of, uh, she planned to uh, do the business that cloth business. She used to bring saris from Chirala nearby place, and uh, she used to sell the saris. Uh, she felt very you know, tough time for her because she don't know anything about the business. She have come across many troubles and uh, problems, but she has a lot of patience and she never lost her confidence at any time. And she started uh, visiting all the offices and uh, she started to give uh, saris for EMA basis to employees and she used to go and collect it. Uh, that the hard work she was doing uh, to get the success in her business she insp uh, that inspired me a lot and i have seen she's balancing her business life and family life uh, both together well and she has brought up children and today she was success woman in my uh, family and she proved herself that the reason i always uh, admire her for all the tough time she she have come across and she was patient enough to prove herself and she have taken all the opportunities, whatever she uh, she come, uh, she took advantage and uh, she proved herself. 
i think being a woman existing in society uh, by facing all these problems it is very uh, difficult but she have proved for everyone okay and what does your mother do now sir what does she do now now she is uh, she established her own uh, shop in um, central area of the city and she is running two shops by having some employees under her and she is now be, uh, she is uh, operating the two shops and she is earning lot and giving uh, employment to other people Fantastic. also Thank you, Mariala. Thank, thank you. That's great. Okay, brilliant. So I asked you that question at the end, just as an example as to what you can do if you need to extend a little bit. So if you're coming towards the end and the examiner's like, well, you know, I want you to keep talking for a little bit longer. What you can do is you were talking about her in the past and what she did in the past. You can talk about what she's doing now. And if you've already talked about what she's doing now, you can talk about what you think her plans would be for the future. So these are things you can do just to extend for your speaking for part two if you need to, to get to those two minutes. But um, yeah, a really wide variety of vocabulary you got there, Mariala. Um, really nice expressions, balancing business life and family life, you know, all the tough times, some phrasal verbs you're using to come across difficulties, um, different past tense forms. You used to bring the saris you were talking about as well. Um, so really nice um, use of grammatical and vocabulary range. Um, your fluency was at a good level. As well, I mean, you were speaking quite fast. Uh, I don't know if that's just natural to you just to speak quite fast or if there were a little bit of nerves. What I would do is I would just slow down slightly um, because that way you can express more clearly the pronunciation features. Because I think sometimes when you speak very quick, quickly, you, you lose variety in your pronunciation in terms of your intonation particularly. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, so I think, I think that would be um, a positive step, but yeah. Definitely in terms of grammar and vocabulary, really strong. Um, and if you just also, again, the other benefit of slowing down just slightly is that you'll, uh, you, won't, you won't run out of things to say within, within the two minutes because you're just slowing down a little bit. And that means, obviously, you'll take up a little bit more time. So, um, yeah, but, but really well done, Mariala. Some really good stuff Thank in you. there. Thank no you. No worries. So okay. So we're going to move on now for some more practice. Um, I'm going to bring Marcia into the class. Uh, I think another new student. So let me bring Marcia in. Hi there, Marcia. Hi, good morning. Good. It's morning where you are, is it? Sorry, I'm sorry. It's afternoon. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> where, where are you? Which country are you in? So I am in Bermuda. Oh, right. So Bermuda, yes. it's, is it the morning in Bermuda? No, it's it's in the afternoon. Oh, it's, it's the like afternoon. Okay. Seventeen minutes to one to one. No problem. Okay. Um. So, Marcia, we're going to move on to a new topic, and the topic is, as you can see, a book. So, can you see that topic clearly on your screen? I yes, I'm seeing the book, the topic. Yes. Brilliant. Okay, Marcia. So um, you've got a minute then to prepare and then you should speak on the topic for up to two minutes. Okay, so are you ready to begin there, Marcia? I am. Brilliant. Okay. So, please do. Okay. So, um, 
my book that I read, um, the topic of this book is How to Learn to Pray. This book I read a few months ago, and the book is written by Joyce Myers. This book is very inspirational as it, it guides you step by step um, how you can learn to pray that if you don't know how to pray already. It also contains um, Bible, Bible scriptures that um, you can quote daily to assist you in your learning, your steps to learn to pray. And um, this book, it, it's just, um, I would say I use it as a daily devotion, devotion for myself. And um, it helps me to have um, a calmer spirit in the morning. So it's like, um, it, it inspires me as well as um, it, I use it as meditation also. Um, so the book is very exciting because I mean, I am a Christian and I love, I love reading the Bible and I love to read um, biblical things. So that also aids me to widen my knowledge about the Bible as well as, you know, I can go and share with other persons to encourage them in their prayer life and, you know, just to encourage people in general. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. And how do you uh, think this book could help people? So this book, it can really help persons who are struggling to, I mean, struggling with their prayer life, um, persons who are not really Christians, who, I mean, does not have um, this daily habit of praying. So it can okay. um, motivate them and help them to learn how to do this Thank you. prayer. Thank You're you welcome. very much. You're okay, welcome. great. Yeah, so really, really good there, Marcia. Um, you, you know, just towards the end, there were a few ideas um, that you, you know, were kind of coming yeah. towards the end of, but we were almost there with the two minutes. Um, you know, we some nice vocabulary, inspirational, calm spirits, you know, talking about meditation and widen your knowledge. Um, so it was very clear. Your pronunciation was very clear. Um, you were very accurate in your use of grammar and vocabulary. I didn't notice any grammar and vocabulary mistakes. The only thing I would say okay. is, um, is that you, you were using the word persons. The most common way of using uh, the word, the plural, is, is people. But, oh, um, well. yeah, persons does exist. It does exist, yes. but yeah, people is, is a little bit more. People. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit more common, certainly in, in the USA and, and the UK. Um, okay. But yeah, but, but really good stuff. Um, your, I think your natural pace of speaking is, is quite relaxed, uh, which, isn't, okay. which isn't a bad thing. But all, all I would say is, is that um, uh, it does mean that because, you know, if you do speak at a more relaxed pace, it does mean that you don't get to show as much variety in your vocabulary. Um, okay. But then, you know, having said that, part three, we'll, we'll get to challenge you on that as well. So, um, yeah, really good stuff there, Marcia. Like I said, the accuracy was definitely the, the, the strongest part of your speaking. So, uh, oh, well. yeah, good shape. It's my, it's my first attempt, so I well, will definitely work on it. Yeah, because yeah. I, it's new to me. It's, yeah. it's going to be yeah. my first time taking this exam, so it's a bit new to me. Okay. And oh, well, there you go. So, yeah, and just to set the record straight, I'm originally from Jamaica. I'm just here in Bermuda working. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. I thought, yeah, I thought I recognised the accent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, think you. gonna, I think you're going to. I think you're going to do well, Marcia, in the in the thank exam, particularly in the, in the speaking. No worries. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, so some really good stuff there. Um, I can see Sophia. Some questions. Um, so. What type of book it is and what it's about, is that not the same? No, it's different. What type of book it is, is basically saying, is it a fictional novel? Is it a dramatic novel? Is it a romantic novel? Um, is it a comic book, etc.? What it's about is the story. What's the story of the book? So, uh, so those questions are a little bit different. But um, we're going to move on to part three now. Just before we do, a reminder about the IELTS Scholarship Programme. 
We can provide you with support if you're looking to work and live in the USA as a nurse. If you would like to find out how you can get a lot of extra support, including being able to do live practice in these sorts of classes, then click on the link, which you can see at the bottom of the screen today, in order to find out more information. You could potentially get all of this support for free. Okay, so IELTS Speaking Part 3. This is a Q&A format, and it will involve um, the same topic as you discussed in Part 2 when you do it in the exam. So the topics we're going to look at now are topics that we have previously covered in Part 2. So we're going back to the topic of athletics, and I'm going to bring uh, Edith into the class. Hi there, Edith. Yeah, hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good evening from Nigeria. Good evening to you, Edith. Good evening to you. Is this your first time in the class? Yes. Well, welcome to you. And um, I hope things are going well in Nigeria. Oh, we are pushing it here. <laughs> say, We're fine. Say again. You're doing fine. Good, 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 good. Yes. Okay. So, Edith, I'm going to ask you some questions then based on part three of the IELTS speaking exam. And okay. uh, the first question I'd like to ask you is, in your opinion, what characteristics do you think an athlete should have? Okay, thank you for that. Um, I think uh, strongly that um, most athletes are supposed to, you know, exhibit certain qualities and attributes that should stand them out as figures in the society. And uh, a few of them that I'll mention here is that um, they're supposed to have uh, this charisma uh, that draws people closer to them because a lot of people admire them from afar and they wish to be like them. And then secondly is that um, they should be uh, have this uh, a character of uh, being honest and then also um, have this uh, quality of uh, trying to encourage uh, the younger ones that look up to them uh, in times of uh, trying to emulate and uh, mimic them in different ways that uh, they admire them. Okay. And why do you think there are so few top athletes? Um, basically, there are few athletes because um, athletics is a, 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 a sport that uh, uh, requires a stamina. And uh, for one to endure and uh, continue in that uh, profession, it requires that one will have uh, to be committed to the demands of uh, being an athlete. And so a uh, few of them may uh, you know, uh, struggle to get to that level in life. And then some may also uh, may not be able to get up to that level. Uh, they may want to decline at a stage, maybe due to injuries, sports injuries, or maybe due to um, their, 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 their people may want to say, okay, please stop uh, because um, we want to, to be alive than uh, losing you. Okay. Why do you think that some sports are more popular than others? Well, practically, I believe that uh, some uh, uh, sports are more famous than others uh, because um, like uh, football, for instance, uh, uh, most people of the world uh, admire uh, football arts and uh, it's a kind of a, uh, a sport that draws, uh, unite and draws people, you know, especially when they have World Cup or, you know, uh, any form of a, a competition that draws uh, countries together. And so they tend to become more popular than other uh, sports. Okay, thank you very much, Edith. We'll, we'll stop there. That was, that was great. You really were able to develop a lot on those questions and use an extremely wide vocabulary. Um, some examples here, you were talking about the attributes, um, charisma, um, requires stamina, committed to the demands, um, and you were paraphrasing as well. So you, um, when I asked you about why certain sports are more popular, you paraphrased a famous, um, which, was, which was nice. You could also have used well-known. Might have been an even closer paraphrase there, but it was a good technique to paraphrase the question to show your own vocabulary. Um, grammatically, um, you were very accurate um, generally. Only slips that I noticed is that you, that you used the expression to stand out, but you said stand them out. Um, so we don't use the, the object in that case, we just say to stand out 
we don't need to use them in that expression. So it's a way for them, okay. a way for, you could say a way for them to stand out. Um, oh. You could have used there. But yeah, there weren't, there weren't many slips. That was just one. The, the, only, the only other one I noticed was you said um, all of the people um, admires them. Um, but because you've used people, you'd want to use admire without the S. You'd only use admire with the S if it was singular. So admire. So they were the only, only slips that I noticed in terms of grammar. Um, yeah, I, I thought, you know, you were really extending and you were giving lots of ideas. Just, just I think what would have given a bit more structure, particularly to the first two questions, would be more examples. So in the third question, you did it well because you gave an example of football as a really popular sport and giving an example helps to make your ideas a bit more concrete. But in the first two questions, I thought you could have done that as well. So maybe give an example of an athlete who you think does have the characteristics that um, an athlete should have. For the second one, maybe give an example of an athlete who is a top athlete and, um, you know, why they've achieved what they achieved. So, um, yeah, just more examples, I think, would have been useful just to help your ideas be more concrete. But aside from that, you, you did really well and um, clearly had a, a very high level of fluency as well, speaking at a, at a natural pace. Um, and yeah, 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 you did uh, you did really well, Edith. Thank you, thank you thank so you much. much. No worries. Okay, let's let's continue on. Um, so we're going to move on to a, another set of questions. Um, we talked about business people before, didn't we? So we're going to go on to the topic of business people or a business person for part three. Um, I, I am going to try and bring in new students this week just because we do like to, to vary the opportunities to practice um, as much as possible. So I'm going to bring Mac in. Hi there, Mac. If you are. Hi there. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Where, um, where are you, Mac? Where are you based? Uh, I'm from the Philippines. Okay, that's great. Is this your first time in this class? Yes, it's my first day. We've got a lot of people joining us for the first time today. So um, you are very welcome to join us. It's great to see you. Um, and yeah, are you ready to do some practice? Uh, let's, uh, let's try. Let's, let's try. Good. Okay. So um, uh, the first question I have for you, uh, Mac, is what qualities do you think people need in order to run their own business? Um, I think the the person should have a uh, a a heart for the or a passion for what he's going to um, build uh, and he should have a heart for his uh employee also uh, um, should okay be, um should be a, should be a role model to his um subordinates okay and what do you think are the key factors that contribute to the success of a business um I think uh, uh, being an example to your people um, could be one of the key factors because when they saw that that uh, you are genuine to your passion in um, in in starting your own business, your subordinate will follow you, and they will give back to to your to you. okay and why do you think so many businesses fail i think uh, some businesses fail because of uh, uh especially right now we are in the destroying times during the pandemic um uh, we're often faced with uh, struggles like uh, financial uh, burdens. Okay. 
Okay, um, we'll, we'll stop there, Mac, just because um, I, I want to try and get at least one other person in to do a bit of practice today. But um, there was some nice vocabulary there. So is this, it did seem new to you, though. There was a lot of hesitation, a lot yeah, of... Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going there. Time. Ner nervous. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's just natural. I, but I hope, yeah, if you're not used to it. But I hope next time I'm, I'm going yeah, to so my vocabulary. This is it, yeah. So I think I think you have got good vocabulary because you were using some nice expressions at times, like you know, role model to his subordinates. You were saying there's know, so trying much, times. There's so much in my mind that I can't <laughs> get it out. Uh, actually, get it out. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So this is it. It, it comes with practice. Um, but one thing that I recommend with uh, part three is right at the beginning, you can use time buying phrases. So you can say, okay, that is an interesting question, and I think there are many different aspects to it. One aspect is and you can almost say that to the beginning of any question but what it does is it gets you talking it gets your tongue moving so you're not just silent you know it gets you saying something and you don't have yeah. to give the perfect response um but just give a response that is coherent that's the key um maybe there was that's a bit of problem <laughs> right because what trying to give the perfect response yeah yeah it can be. It can be, yeah. If we overthink it, then that, that impacts our fluency in a, in a negative way often. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I say. And just be careful when you're answering the questions because the second question was about a successful business, um, not so much about the person. And you were answering the second okay. question very, very similarly to the first question. So yeah, just be careful that your, your answers are, are relevant. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but they should just be relevant. It must be relevant, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Sorry, sorry. Okay. No, no, don't apologize, Mike. You know, well done for getting involved. And uh, I look forward to doing more practice with you in future classes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so I did want to make time. We've had a lot of people join us in the class today. So I did want to make time to bring in one other student. Um, Cynthia, are you there? Hi, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon to you. How are you doing? It, well, it's not time, night time here in the Philippines, like uh, Matt. Okay, so you're set down. Good. Yeah, good, good, good. Having a relaxing night so far? Yeah, a little bit. Good, good, good. Um, so, Cynthia, we're going to move on to the um, topic of the book once more, uh, this time from the perspective of part three. So my first question for you, do you think reading is important? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, reading books makes uh, a person like widen the horizon and it makes him understand what are the thoughts of the, uh, the author. And um, it helps also the person like being uh, calm and enlighten his mind on what are the um, thoughts being written and so as to apply it in the in 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 his or her on the person's real life and do you think boys and girls tend to like the same books or do they like different kinds of books well um there are different uh i mean with different genders that we have i think gir the girls um, mostly read the books rather than the males or the, the boys because um, I think um, mainly because of their like of their wants or what their interest is like the boys mainly just wants to play uh, or do in the computer playing the computer and the ladies uh, would want to have just like sitting in their room and um, having that uh, some some people like uh, I mean the ladies would just meditate um, just stay in their room and doing a quiet times so I think um, they have different like a perspective a perspective with regards to reading books with different genders why do you think some people prefer to read physical books as opposed to reading a book on a device Oh, well, because um, like as for me, I prefer reading book wherein I could uh, like it's tangible. I could just um, browse and 
I am not fond of like skimming um, through the a certain device. I would want that. Um, but, uh, I believe in the touch and uh, being seen by through the eyes because I could learn more and it instills in my mind what I have read. And uh, with regards to reading a device, you could just um, there are instances that um, there are like stories in the internet that are being written by a common person and not uh, specifically with an author that is like a professional one so every, anyone could just um, write anything in the in, this, in those uh, from the internet like in the google but a uh, reading book is uh, more like it's more on the professional thing and uh, well that's it Okay, and finally, what are the benefits of listening to audiobooks? Well, it's just like a podcast. Um, we could, uh, we can, uh, listening over the podcast makes you like imagine or like, um, like uh, what I've said a while back. It's like also like, um, widening also the horizon, like. Uh, um, your mind, uh, your mind's just to keep on moving and thinking about things, and imagining how it's being done, and uh, as it being compared to what is in the reality, like uh, like what I've, what we are, we are being seen uh, currently. Okay, thank you very much, there, Cynthia. So, some nice responses there to the questions. I like the fact you used a bit of a time buying phrase for the first one, just to kind of get you going. Uh, that is always a good strategy. Um, you know, that is an interesting question. It gives me a couple of seconds. Right, let me set myself, let me speak. So you were composed. You spoke at a nice pace. Um, your pronunciation was clear and accurate as well. Um, just a few slips in grammar and vocabulary choice. So widen their horizon. That, that's, that's okay, but broaden is the more common term, to broaden their horizon. Um, yeah. So just, yeah, just bear that in mind as, a, as an alternative. Um, and then there were some slips in verb form. So you said it helps the person being calm. Um, but after help, you, you should use two plus infinitive. So it helps the person yeah. to, to be calm. I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> it's my first yeah, time. Yeah, it's natural. It's natural. And <laughs> yes, you, and, and, you know, a lot of first times today. Uh, very warm welcome to you as well. Um, as Sophia is saying, it, it can be nerve wracking. So yeah, you, I mean, you did well. You did well, Cynthia. Um, as I was saying. Some nice vocabulary as well. Tangible was a good word. So really nice you were using that word. Uh, skimming through the book as well. Another nice vocabulary item that you used there. Um, you were self-correcting. So uh, you were talking about perspectives. You, you, you said the word and then you corrected yourself uh, uh, to the correct word. Um, but again, just in terms of verb forms, you said um, people want to have sitting in their room. I think you're saying ladies or women uh, want to have sitting in the room. Just want to sit. Um, so don't overcomplicate it by, you know, putting in different verb forms that are inaccurate. Yeah, want plus two plus infinitive. So yeah, I think okay. it's just a few verb, verb forms that that's all, just to sort of tighten up on some of the grammar. Um, yeah, but yeah, aside from that, Cynthia, you, you did well. Thanks a lot. No worries. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so thank you very much, guys, for joining us today. Sorry that I wasn't able to involve everyone in the class in the practice. Um, for those who did join us this week who I wasn't able to get involved, uh, if you join next week, then I will make you a priority. Um, it's very unpredictable sometimes. Last week, um, we had fewer people involved, so I was able to give um, quite a lot of practice to those who were there. This week, we've had more people involved. So as I say, we, we do try to rotate it to get as many people engaged as possible. So have a great weekend for all of you. I hope it's restful. I hope it's relaxing. Uh, before we finish, let me just um, remind those who are watching, if you would like to get involved in classes like this and have extra support in terms of achieving your goals of living and working in the USA as a nurse, then join us at the IELTS Scholarship Program. You could receive all of this extra support potentially for free. So you can see the details of that at the bottom of my screen. Just click on the link and you will be able to find out more information about this fantastic opportunity. So once again, guys, um, a big thank you to all those who were involved and who joined us live in the class and those who commented as well. I look forward to seeing you next week.